Hangout. The Hangout on Air is live. Good morning and welcome to our very special broadcast from beautiful Montecito, California, the home of not Seth David. <laughs> <laughs> and Eric's back there. Good morning. Doing the flex. Come on, this is our exercise for the day. Raise your arms and flex your biceps. That's how we get going. That's our workout. And and then since I, I said this before we went live, I need to say it while we're live. Today's episode is sponsored by the letter W. And what does W represent? Uh, world. World, world? Is it world domination. I thought it was cashew today. It is. It is cashew. I didn't have a K handy. I'm Whoa. sorry. Whoa. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. We're working on it. <laughs> okay. We've just switched sponsors. Today's show is sponsored by the letter K. It's upside down, Seth. I, you know, it looked right to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted the blue side. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, as you all have no doubt gathered, we have a very special guest today, uh, and we're going to be looking at Cashew Simple Cloud Accounting with the wonderful Casey Bain. But before we do that, um, does anybody have any questions, anything you want to go over, things that were posted in ABO this week that we want to talk about, or should we just dive right into Cashew Simple Cloud Accounting? I say we dive right in. All right, then. So, Excellent. Casey, I promised up to five minutes of banter. We've had less than two. That's okay. The floor is yours. So tell us, you know, I think a good place to start with is who's the ideal customer for Cashew? Who's your typical company or person walking in the door who you would say, this is the perfect person to be using Cashew? Excellent uh, question. So, hi, everybody. I'm Casey from Cashew. Nice to meet you all. Uh, so our perfect customer is really, I hear a bit of an echo, but hopefully you guys don't hear that. But um, our perfect customer is really that small business owner, really the zero to ten employee kind of range, um, more service-based, so not uh, not inventory heavy, but something like, um, you know, a contractor, um, like a marketing consultant, that kind of thing, where it's really more service-based small businesses. And, uh, yeah, it's something really easy for them to use on the web and uh, on lots of mobile devices as well. Excellent. And you've been with Cashew for a little while now. So yep. how's it going over there? What's going on in, in the world of Cashew? Before we get into the software de demo, let's talk about Cashew as a company. Yeah, so um, we are based out of much less sunny than your office, out of Vancouver up here in Canada. Um, we are just over five years old as a company, um, over 200,000 customers worldwide, so that's pretty exciting. Um, in terms of product, lots of stuff going on. Um, we originally started just with our web app at cashew.com and then when the iPad came out uh, we got uh, really involved in that um, kind of early in the in the iPad lifespan so um, we have an iPad app iPhone and uh, just before Christmas we released an Android app as well so just making it really easy for um, our small business customers to be able to do kind of the basics of their bookkeeping you know take pictures of their receipts invoice their clients wherever they might be and then you guys can log in and kind of do the hard stuff uh, on the website. One of the things I remember that grabbed my attention was uh, you, a few years back, you guys were very new at that time, I think. Um, I had a demo of the Cashew iPad app, and I remember it was blown away. That's the thing that stood out to me more than anything else, was you guys have probably the best mobile app of all the Thank cloud you. accounting. So tell us about that. I mean, obviously there was some thought behind that. Why you guys place so much emphasis on it is probably obvious, but I would love to hear from you about, you know, uh, where that came from and at what point and why it was decided to put so much emphasis on the mobile app. So um, I always like to say our CEO is a giant Apple fanboy, but um, there are, of course, more reasons behind that. Um, so we're the number one accounting app in the App Store, which is uh, very exciting, especially for a company uh, like ours that's kind of on the smaller scale of accounting companies that are out there. But um, really, it's about being able to work wherever you want to work. And I know it's something that, uh, that all of you guys can relate to as well, especially for something um, like bookkeeping and like... Taking, I'm sorry, 
like keeping track of your expenses and your invoices, it's so easy for that to just get pushed aside. So making it easy for your customers to just kind of keep on top of their books so that uh, you don't have that, you know, end of the month or even worse case than that, you know, end of the year where there's a giant bag full of receipts. Just kind of making that process a lot easier and taking, taking advantage of some of the mobile tools that are out there. Right. And does the um, Android app is does it have all the same functionality now that it's out as the as the um, the uh, what's it called you know that other camp yeah, that yeah. app <laughs> and the iOS stuff so not yet but we are definitely working on it we have a few great um, Android experts that are uh, that joined our team last year so. Um, if you're using an Android, if you're using the Android device, definitely send us your feedback because uh, we're kind of in the early stages in the Android game, so we're trying to make something that works best for that group. Right, and as far as the, um, you know, the app itself goes, the 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 you know either one, the the Apple app, the iOS app. I always forget iOS. No, That's I know. The term I'm looking for. Um, it must be an Android fanboy thing. Good morning, Tina. Um, haven't seen Tina in a while. It's lovely to see you again. Yeah, um, in fact, perfect. we were just 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 before we went live, we were kind of talking about you. We were talking about how our motto here is: you get what you get. Which Sammy is, girl. You know, Sammy's. That's Sammy's uh, influence. Sammy's Tina's daughter. For those of you who okay. don't know. So, um, so Casey, the the app I can do a lot of times with mobile apps. Uh, there's limited functionality compared to what I, for lack of a better word, I'll call the desktop app, but really we're talking about the browser-based yeah. app. So the, but in Cashew's case, I think it's fair to say that the mobile app has all the functionality as the browser side. Yeah, especially on, uh, so mainly on the Apple side for now, but you can look at, I mean, you can pull like a profit and loss report, you can look at your balance sheet, your receivables, payable, all of that right from your mobile device, which is huge. Um, probably the only thing for um, the web app is that, of course, you can download the uh, download all your reports to Excel or to a CSV form. So that's kind of just some you know stuff that you would expect when you're working on your computer. But um, in terms of mobile functionality, there's definitely um, I, I would say it's one of the more fully featured uh, mobile accounting apps out there. Gotcha. All right. So, um, anybody else have questions for Casey before we get into a software demo? And and actually, we need to take a quick break here. Just uh, listen up. So, are you I'm saying that uh, cashew <laughs> is your favorite thing? Every time that I broadcast from Montecito, we have a theme song. Last time it was "This Is How We Do It." This morning, it's "These Are a Few of My Favorite Things." That's perfect for cashew, right? Because yes. these are a few of our favorite things. We love the ability to do our job from anywhere, right? Yeah. I want to be on the beach, making money, right? Getting work done while soaking in the sun. Yeah. I have a quick question. What uh, differentiates you from EO and uh, Zero? So our main thing is really um, ease of use. So we want to make it as easy as possible for your small business clients to be able to really kind of track their data in Cashew. So making it easy for them to you know, create an invoice, um, create an expense, that kind of stuff, while still having the accounting functionality that you guys need to be able to you know, pull proper reports for them and really give them that advice on their business. Um, and of course, free support is a big thing. Uh, not only myself, but a bunch of people uh, on our support team. So if you ever do have questions, you can certainly give us a call. And uh, free support no matter what. If you're a paying customer, if you've uh, never used us before, um, if you've just met me on uh, this call. So uh, we really want to you know, help you and make things as easy as possible. Do you have so apps that integrate with it? Um, so we do have a few integrations, um, some payroll ones. Um, in the states, we have Paychecks, um, and up in Canada, we have Payment Evolution and Simple Pay, um, and then a few others as well. Awesome. Anybody else questions? Okay, I'll take that as a no. So usually, I like to wait till the end. But I kind of hate when people make your way to the end for this next question, so I'm going to bring it up right at the beginning. Okay. Let's just get right down to business. What does it cost me to get into Cashew? How does it work for accountants? To do? Can I Excellent. get it as an accountant and offer it to my clients and include it in my fees? How does that all work? 
So um, that is a great question, and I also had it at the end, but it's, uh, like you said, better to do this up front. So um, we offer a free account to accountants and bookkeepers. So that means all of you guys can log into Cashew for free on any of your devices um, on the web as well. Because we want to make sure that you, uh, you never want to recommend something to your clients that you haven't tried yourself. So we want to make it as easy as possible for you to, for you to get to know Cashew. So if you go to cashew.com slash MVP, that's our um, accountants and bookkeepers program. Or if you just go to cashew.com, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and there's a link called uh, accountants. If you click on that, you're able to sign up for free. So full, um, non-expiring account uh, for you guys. For your clients, um, as a Cashew MVP, you get um, discounted pricing for your clients. So instead of $20 a month, um, it is $13 a month. So a nice discount there uh, for your clients. And you can see all of your clients from a single login. Um, you can set permissions and stuff because sometimes you might not want your clients, uh, certain clients being as involved in the books as maybe some others. So you can definitely set those uh, um, those features and um, the great thing is I mean especially with the mobile stuff you can view all of your clients like right from your iPad so if a client calls you and they're in a panic and uh, you know you're you're on the beach or out at the cottage you can just pull out your iPhone or uh, your iPad and pull up their account and be able to see right away what, what they've been up to excellent so, so you guys went with thirteen dollars a month I hope there are no accountants out there who have what do they call it triskaidekaphobia the fear of the number <laughs> no, it's good luck good luck <laughs> <laughs> so, um, without further ado, uh, do you want to share your screen and give us yeah, a demo? Yeah, so I'm going to do that. Like. Excellent. Um, so just bear with me for a moment here. Yeah. Okay, so hopefully you can see my browser window right now. Almost. There it is. Excellent. Okay. So um, this is Cashew, the web app, when you first log into your account. So I'm just going to take you through a quick tour um, of everything so that you're uh, you know, able to see. So this is the dashboard when you first log in. So this is really nice for yourself and for your clients because everything you need is right at your fingertips. So you can see up at the top we have the, uh, the income and uh, invoices section. And then if you scroll down just a bit, we have expenses and all of that kind of stuff. Um, down at the bottom. Um, over on our right hand side you can see lots of mini reports. So these are great so that you can kind of see your business right at a glance. So you can see especially for things like you can see down here receivables and payables. Um, especially for this sample company they have quite a bit of money outstanding. So that's a great chance for uh, you know maybe you to remind your customers to follow up on some invoices and uh, make sure they're getting paid. So a really easy way to kind of see your business at a glance that's not too intimidating. One of the things I do want to point out is uh, over on the left hand side here you can see this little arrow. So this is where I see all of my accounts as an accountant. So I don't need to remember you know, a million logins and passwords. I have everything I need right to, at my fingertips which is really handy. So um, I'm going to walk you through kind of the, the process as if you were a small business owner and you needed to set up some stuff in your Cashew account. So I'm going to click over to the invoice tab right here and you can see it's really easy to create an invoice add in your customers and of course you can um, import your data as well so if you have customers who are using um, a different accounting system or even if they just have you know a CSV or an Excel list full of their clients really easy to import that all in so I'm gonna pick an example just from our list here in this case um, our customer is a photographer business or photography business um, you can see you can set up all of your terms and payments this is really a nice feature um, of Cashew, especially for our accountants, because you're able to set up your chart of accounts. So while Cashew does come with a default chart of accounts, um, you can also edit that as well to really customize it, depending on what your particular clients need, and kind of make it easy so that your clients um, only see the ones that they need to have access to. So making things um, easier on yourself come, uh, come tax season. So we also have um, a new feature that came out in, well not so new now, that came out in the fall which is project tracking. Uh, this is great if you have customers um, that are doing work for, I always like to say if you're working for a big client and you're doing work for lots of different departments, it's nice to be able to sort that by project so that you can see, you know, even just your profit and loss by project, it's really um, great, especially as a small business owner, to have that kind of, uh, that kind of insight. 
So you can see here, I'll add in uh, my, you can set up your income accounts as well. So really easy to do all of that. And then um, you can add in your information here. And add in all of your things. So you can add in all of your taxes as well. So this is another area where the accountant or the bookkeeper really gets to uh, have a lot of influence because you can help your clients set up all of your taxes. I'll show you that in uh, in just a couple of minutes. But uh, you can see here really easy to to set up your taxes, and that gets added in automatically. Um, and of course, you can add in your PO number. Your terms get pulled from your terms. Um, and payment account just up here. And uh, one of the things I did want to point out is a uh, feature called uh, Repeat, which um, is like a recurring invoice. So this is great if you have customers that are doing uh, monthly or weekly, maybe not daily invoices, although that kind of uh, revenue would be pretty nice. But uh, you can see here, you can set up, especially if you're doing, uh, if you have customers that are doing like IT support work or web hosting, or even just regular contracts, um, really easy to set that up to uh, take away some of the administrative hassle, which is always nice. So uh, I'm going to add in a little note here. And you can see, even with all of my talking, it only took a couple of minutes to put that invoice together. And you can see here a couple of options. You can edit the, the invoice. You can email it out. Um, you can make a copy of it. Or you can download the PDF, which um, I clicked too fast and, uh, and went away from it. So I'm just going to click on our income tab. And here's our invoice that we just created. So you can see here, really easy to, uh, to edit it if you need to. And especially um, as an accountant or a bookkeeper, great to be able to log in and kind of, uh, if you need to change, especially taxes, I find, can be a bit tricky. Um, so you can go in and change those if you need to. So a couple of things I do want to talk about. I'm going to talk about the change log down at the bottom just in a minute. But um, I'm going to download the PDF. And there you go. So you can see your invoice right there. You can actually add in your own logo um, as well. Um, this one, this example doesn't have one, but you can add that in. And you can see really set up like, um, like how an invoice is supposed to look. So this is great so that um, your customer's clients get the information that they need uh, to be able to pay the invoice and have things go smoothly there. So. Um, the other option is also we have different invoice templates. So you're able to really customize your invoice, especially if you have customers that are in kind of more creative fields, really easy for them to, um, to be able to customize it, quite a variety of different templates. And you can actually upload a custom template as well. Um, a lot of our clients who are, uh, you know, graphic designers and that kind of thing love that feature because they are very good at that kind of thing. So I did want to go down to the change log, which especially being on the, um, the accountant and bookkeeper side uh, of the product, this part is probably one of my favorite features to talk about. So this gives you all of the changes that have ha happened to this particular transaction, which in this case is an invoice. So you can see when who logged in, which in this case is me, all of the things that I've done, and the timestamp as well. So this is great, especially if you have clients that are more involved with their books and you kind of want to see who changed what and when they changed it, what did it used to be. I love it even just for, you know, uh, times I'm forgetful and maybe don't remember what, uh, what I used to have the tax rate at and why I changed it, that kind of thing. But um, this is great for uh, to see what changes your clients have made, but also to see what kind of changes uh, other people on your team may have made. So. Definitely a great resource. You can add in some notes there to keep on track of things. So after you've created your um, invoice, the next thing uh, that you want to do is add in a payment. So I'm just going to click on our Add a Payment button there. And uh, oh, I see lots of questions coming up. So I will flip back and answer some of those uh, as we go. Um, so you can add a payment really easily. So let's say we have a great client, the kind that um, pays us on the same day that they get the invoice, which uh, are my favorite kind of clients. So you can add in your check number and add that against, uh, against your invoice. You can see here that gets added in. And uh, not only that, but our invoice also gets updated automatically. So you can see our amount due is now switched to zero. So this is great so that you can send out updated information uh, to your clients. So uh, I'm going to switch over next to 
our expenses tab. So uh, expenses are probably my least favorite part of, uh, of running a business, as I'm sure many uh, of your, probably yourselves and your business owner customers would agree. Um, I always tell the story of uh, before Cashew, when I would come back from a business trip with um, a giant, uh, either the envelope from the hotel desk or in some uh, very long trip cases, the laundry bag from the hotel filled with receipts, all kinds of stuff, and uh, come back and kind of hand slyly hand those over to my bookkeeper and uh, hope for the best. So in this case, we make it a lot easier so you no longer have to uh, you know, come back with that grocery bag full of receipts anytime you go on a business trip. So really easy to, to add in your expenses. So I'll just do a quick expense right here as well. So I'm going to backdate this a little bit. Um, of course, you can back or forward date as you need. Add in my uh, um, vendor. Really easy to add new vendors as well. Um, which I'll show you in just a minute. You can add in your terms also, so I'll put it on my credit card. You can attach it to projects if you need. And there we go. Add that in and oops, not that not that cheap of a lunch. There we go. And add in our taxes as well as necessary. So for expenses, I love the repeating function, especially if you have something like um, a cell phone bill or your rent or your web hosting fees or any you know of your subscription costs really easy to make those repeating transactions so that you don't need to enter them in all of the time so definitely saves a lot of administrative work and uh, although we have the feature in uh, in invoices as well I use it in expenses all the time because I have so many things that just you know show up on my credit card every month um, so make it easy to kind of keep track of all of that stuff and you can see down here, of course, all of your expenses as well. Um, and then on the side, again, you have the mini reports with each section. So you can see um, your by vendor, how much you're spending, your expenses by vendor. Um, you can see it by different accounts. So really easy to kind of see all of that, uh, all of that right in Cashew. So one of the other benefits that uh, if you're using one of our mobile apps, um, you can actually take a picture of your receipt. So while we don't have that um, on the web just yet, if you do have an iPhone or an iPad, definitely download the app. Um, I would say right now, as long as you still pay attention to the rest of, uh, the, rest of the demo, but um, that is a really nice feature and something that we're working on bringing to the web um, very soon. So uh, to just kind of go down a little bit more here, you can see we have a transfer section. So this is great and something that is more used, um, transfers and adjustments, something that, that you guys would probably use more often than your clients. But again, really simple, really easy to use interface. And you can see all the transaction items down there. Our adjustments as well, the same kind of thing, something that, um, that you guys would use perhaps more often than your clients. Um, we also have a great feature that allows you to print checks right from Cashew. So um, although I know we're all kind of trying to write less checks these days, uh, there are still you know cases where you have to and cases where it makes the most sense. So a really nice feature to be able to... I was just going to say print what? Yeah, 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 exactly. So I know some people still do it. It would be a nice day if, uh, if we never had to write another check. Um, but uh, we do have that feature if you still have clients that do it. So I'm just going to check the questions actually before I go too far. Um, so we did get a question about um, bank feeds. So we definitely do let you do that. I'll show you that in just a second. Um, actually, all the questions that we got... I think uh, I'm actually going to, yeah. yeah, so that is excellent. Actually, I have a question. Um, sure. I didn't put it in the chat. That's okay. <laughs> so, uh, unless you can read my mind, which would be a really cool <laughs> I could, feature. I could, but maybe not that good. Um, you mentioned about, you know, had not having to go home with a big pile of receipts, and forgive me if I missed it and you said it, but are you, is there a way to scan the receipts and attach them to expenses, or? So there is, but only on the mobile apps right now. Okay. So we are, yeah, we're working on that for the web. So um, if you're using uh, one of the one of the Apple devices, you can do that right away. But for Android and the web, um, coming soon. Got it. Yeah, excellent. So uh, let me actually, I think I just about answered uh, the questions, or at least we're going to get to them as we go. So somebody asked about um, bringing in your bank transactions. So I also love this, and uh, I know it's sounding from this webinar that I just like the things that uh, give you less work, but especially, uh, you know, when you're running your own business, there is more than enough stuff 
to do. So uh, anything that makes life easier, and especially being able to bring in your bank transactions, less uh, chance for user error, which is huge both for your clients and definitely make things easier for yourself. So really easy to, in this, I don't have any example, any uh, transactions in this example, but um, we have, I think the number is over 5,000 different banks and credit unions worldwide. Um, if most of you guys are in the States, which I believe you are, we have definitely got you covered, all kinds of small credit unions and that kind of thing. So um, really easy to bring in that information as well. As I mentioned, um, payroll, so uh, you may have heard, um, it's been a while now, but we, uh, we partnered with Paychex, so we have some cool stuff uh, going on with them. Um, and even if you're not using Paychex as your, um, if you're doing payroll for your clients, you can import still information from your uh, payroll provider. Um, if you're doing it yourself, you can import that um, as an expense. So we can definitely handle it. There are some lots of guidelines um, online as well. We have a great support center with lots of videos and step-by-step -step and all that good stuff um, to help you get this kind of stuff organized. But um, this is definitely an important part, uh, especially for, uh, for our accounting and bookkeeping community. So I'm going to jump next to our reports section. So uh, one of my favorites, because I am definitely um, a numbers kind of person, um, especially if any of you follow me on Twitter, I talk about my love for Excel probably more than is healthy. But um, And as such, you know, all of our reports export to, uh, to Excel or um, a PDF, whatever you might need. So I'll do a quick um, profit and loss here. You can see lots of different options. So this is great, not only for yourselves, so that you can kind of give business advice to your customers, but also if you have clients that are a little bit more involved, especially as a business owner, this is the kind of stuff that they're going to want to see. Maybe not so much, you know, what adjustments you made or what, you know, individual transactions are. But being able to see, you know what, compared to last quarter, how did I do? Or, the, oh, sorry, when I highlight it, you can't really see. Um, the prior six months, you know, all that kind of stuff. So being able to see all of that information as a business owner is really important and kind of a nice just what you need to know to, uh, to make smart business decisions. So you can see as I scroll down here, all of our different um, categories and that kind of thing. So these all get pulled from the chart of accounts, and this is something that you guys have full control over. So however um, is best for your clients, however you run your practice and want to make sure that your clients are doing the same thing, we give you the control to be able to do that because we don't want to uh, have to make you redo how you know how you run your business and how you do accounting and bookkeeping. So lots of customizable options in there. So you can set things up for your clients to make your lives easier, because that's really what we're here for. So you can see our profit and loss. I'm actually going to pop that into a PDF as well. So you can see here, really nice. I love these. What I always tell um, our small business clients is, this is great if you're going to the bank and trying to apply for a loan. You're able to get all of your reports in a PDF form, really easy. I mean, if you're using the iPad, you can actually just take your iPad to the bank and flip through the screens and be able to see, you know, your profit and loss and all that kind of good stuff um, right at a glance. So a lots of options long copy, there. So I'm assuming it's easy also to enter somebody's email and have it sent to them? Yeah, so um, in this case, you would have to download the PDF and send it um, through your email program, but that is an excellent suggestion that um, I'm actually going to bring to my product meeting. There and we also, go. we got a question. What about um, when I invoice customers? Uh, is it, can I get paid electronically through cashier? Do you have any uh, payment service integrations? So that is a great question and something that we are working on. So I hope to have a yes for you very soon, kind of in the next few months. I am. Uh, I'm not on the development side, so I, I'm always weary. Uh, <laughs> you never want to. You never want to stand beside a developer when you say that kind of stuff. But um, it is coming soon, so it's something that we're working on, so that you can just, you know, kind of click a pay now button and pay, you know, by credit card or, um, you know, PayPal or something like that. So definitely something that is very high on our list, and uh, I can say with confidence is currently in development. So. Great. And then, um, yeah. wait, can you scroll down so people can see where the setup options are? Because people oh, uh, team are asking where the setup is to set up your bank feeds and such. So there it is, set up data import. Yeah. Yeah, I see where it's a. I see where it's an import, but I don't see where it's a bank feed. I mean, I can upload something, but I don't see that option to automatically sync it. Yeah. So let me just uh, flip. Oh, nope, wrong one. 
So it is actually under accounts, which um, I will admit is not the most uh, intuitive name for um, where you enter in your bank feeds, but this is where you would do that right here. And there's some instructions as well. Let me open that up. Yeah, I actually went to your guys' help site to search on oh, bank perfect. feeds, and it was really not very helpful. So. Oh, no, not perfect. <laughs> but um, we can we can Sorry. help with that for sure. No, no, but I mean I appreciate the feedback, right? So it's um, that's how we get better, and that's how we can fix things. So yeah, so you can see here, this is where you can enter in, you know, um, all of your your bank information and add in your credentials. Very similar to if you've integrated a bank feed with um, any other software program, the process is pretty similar um, to what you would expect. And then what about classifying the transactions? I assume there's a matching screen like we've gotten accustomed to seeing in other accounting software. And does it have the uh, function where it starts to remember which account gets associated with a given name? Or Yeah, so um, it'll get to know, you know, as as you go. So you can do that kind of in your, um, in your bank reconciliation screen um, that I showed a little bit earlier. But you can uh, you can be able to do that um, here. Once you bring in your transactions, it'll all fill up so that you can match everything where it's supposed to go. Okay. And then uh, can you do me a favor, Casey? Can you sure. run a balance sheet and double click a bank balance so we can see a drill down on a bank account check register? Excellent. So you can see um, our uh, balance sheet right here as of today, all of our transactions and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to click on bank account and then you can see all of our transactions show up. And then of course all of the blue links you can click to, uh, to drill down more to kind of find out what's going on if you needed to look up something in particular. Perfect. Excellent. So I know we went through a lot of the reports, but I'm going to click on our um, activity tab here. Um, so change log, which I mentioned when we were on the individual invoice page, this actually has all of the changes, basically all of the activity that has happened in this account forever. So um, if you want to see you know, what, uh, what changes your clients might have made, maybe what other people on your team are doing, um, if you just need to look things up, um, really just for, for tracking or if you're ever being audited or something like that. Really nice to be able to have, you know, every single thing that's happened. You can see mainly I'm the one who's doing everything uh, in this account, but you can see everything that everything's happened, which is really valuable and really easy to search as well if you're looking for something in particular. So I did want to go through a few of the setup options. I know somebody mentioned data import. So this is where you can import especially, you know, your customers, your vendors, um, trial balance, all that kind of good stuff. Um, we also have the ability to manually import your bank transactions. If you didn't want to do the automatic um, import, you can uh, do it kind of one by one with an imp import from your bank as well. So you have that option if you need. And down here at business profile, so this is very kind of self-explanatory, but this is where you enter in kind of all of the basics um, for your account here. And what I wanted to click on next is taxes. So I know I talked about this um, a little bit earlier about how to set up um, your taxes. And you can put, pull lots of reports and that kind of stuff. You'll probably spend more time on this page than your clients will. But um, this is where you would add in your taxes. You can see here. So um, let me add in an example. And of course, you can do you know decimal places, whatever you might need. Um, and you want to make sure that uh, if it is a registered tax, that you mark it as such, so that you're able to keep track of it and uh, pull all the reports that you need. And um, so, if you're ever doing, um, I don't know if any of you guys have uh, like clients in Quebec or clients in regions like this, but occasionally you have to calculate the tax on top of other taxes. Um, At three point two percent, I'm going to move to Quebec. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, we give you that option in case you have kind of a, a different tax situation. And then, of course, you can set up all of your accounts as well. So um, this is really handy because it takes some of the, uh, the guesswork out of things for your clients. So they're not trying to guess what payables account and all of that kind of stuff that you need to add things to. And then, so Casey, for our friends in Canada, do you guys handle HST and GST? Yep, so um, we do all of that. Um, so we're actually, we're a Canadian company and we actually run our own books in Cashew. So that is um, probably one of my favorite things to talk about because we run our own businesses, or like our own business through this system. So we have to make sure it's able to 
calculate all of our taxes um, appropriately and uh, make sure um, we keep our uh, our in-house accountants very happy. So that is uh, nothing better than hearing feedback from people that they use it every day. Not only from ourselves using the product to run our business, but um, from all of you guys as well. If you ever have any feedback or if something's not working the way that you expected or there's something you love or something you would love to have, um, definitely send that my way. So you can see here all of our taxes information. I'm going to click over to customers. There we go. And um, really easy to enter in your customer information as well. This is great. Um, in most cases, you would kind of import uh, all of your customers from, you know, however you're keeping customer list. But if you're working with a new business or if your client is, you know, invoicing a new client right from the client site, really easy to add in that, uh, that customer information um, right at a glance. And you can see here the only mandatory field is the company name um, up here. But I did want to talk about a couple of things where you can also um, kind of uh, help set things up for your clients. Under terms or payments, you can actually set up a default. And of course, you can always edit this if you need to, but you can set up a default for your customer as well as income from this client will typically go to, you know, however you want to set it up. So really easy to, uh, to make sure that you um, set things up for your client just to make things a little bit easier uh, down the road. So uh, let me see here if there's anything else um, that I need to touch on. You can see the same thing for vendors, really easy to set them up, um, the same kind of format as we just used um, in, uh, in creating a customer. And of course you can import your items as well. Um, where was I here? And uh, set up different projects. So this is great. Um, and something that really our customers were uh, were asking for, so it's it's always nice when you're able to uh, you know get a feature request from your customers and being able to build that right into the product. So that is a great uh, a great feature um, as well right there. I did want to touch on I was on business profile, but I didn't talk about this too much. But this user section over on the side is where you can add in different users for your account uh, if you have. Uh, customers that um, that you need to give access basically to their business, this is where you would do it on this screen. And you can see here you can give them different privileges depending on what you might need, what you might need them to have access to. So I'm going to click over to the dashboard here and you can see all of our reports have um, updated based on the invoice and the expense that we just created today. So you can see uh, all of our little reports there. And I think that just about uh, that just about covers our uh, catch you in a nutshell, I like to say. But uh, let me look back here and see if I uh, may have missed stuff. Uh, Katie was asking, what type of files can you import from the bank? Can you import CSV? QIF, I think, is a specific QuickIn format, and QBO, I think, is specifically QuickBooks. But what file formats can be imported from the bank? So there's actually quite a few, and uh, quite a few of those. Um, the QuickBooks and Quicken files that you can import. Let me just, um, where was I? Uh, accounts or data import? So you actually can import quite a few different uh, file types. Um, oh, CSV yeah. for sure. I always recommend CSV because that is kind of the easiest way to go. But if you do have one of those other formats, and we have a little video here for you as well. Um, I know somebody asked a question about uh, about how to learn more. So we have a great support center at um, support.cashew.com. And I also do weekly training webinars um, on Thursdays. So uh, if you go to our website there, um, cashew.com slash webinars, you'll be able to see all of that information as well. Um, so I know somebody asked about uh, sales tax. Um, so there's... A few, of, you can always edit it as you need to. You can even set up for particular items, which items have sales tax and which ones don't. So that should help with some of the, uh, the service. Uh, you can set up a, a service package as an item um, and then being able to, to edit all of that as well. Excellent. Um, so I might uh, flip over to, let me see what I have here. So um, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna open a slide for a bit if that's all right. So hopefully you guys can see that up on my screen. 
Okay, I think so. So um, basically our, our MVP program, as I mentioned, for accountants and bookkeepers, um, free login, free support, um, free webinars, all that kind of stuff. You can check it out at uh, cashew.com slash MVP. Uh, definitely recommend that, uh, that you go and do that. Um, so I did put together a bunch of slides. This is kind of the important one. If you do have any questions or uh, if, you, if you want some help getting set up with your free account, definitely get in touch. That is what I'm here for. I am Casey at Cashew.com. Um, and uh, of course, lots of different options. We have online chat on our website as well. Uh, we're on Twitter, Facebook, all kinds of stuff. So lots of different ways uh, for you to get in touch with us. So I do hope that you do and kind of give us a try. Um, would love to hear your feedback and uh, hear how we can make things even better for yourselves and for your small business clients. Excellent. Thank you, Casey. Uh, everybody, if you Thanks want to unmute much. yourselves and go ahead and ask your questions live, and Casey, you can turn off the screen sharing if you want. Perfect. I can give you some feedback. Um, oh, please do. I'm a certified pro advisor and a certified zero advisor. The challenge for me is that I've only got X amount of time and energy. Yeah. And to go and learn a new program, I mean, the way to me, the way you become – if you become more efficient on one program, you can do work faster. And so trying to, you know, keep three programs straight in my mind would be a challenge. And so if I were just doing – I do taxes also. So if I were just doing consulting and online accounting, that might be an option. But I've only got so much bandwidth that mm -hmm. I can, you know. So I think that's the challenge you, you will have because it looks like a very good program. Thank but you. in terms of people wanting to – take on the learning curve of another program versus trying to support three different client bases, you know, is, would be kind of a challenge. Which was a great reason why we should have a course on School of Bookkeeping for Cashew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, no, I agree, I agree. But also I think if I can actually say something on that, I think one of the nice things, and hopefully everybody has kind of seen this from today's demonstration, is the learning curve on something like Cashew, I think, should be fairly short for most people. It's so easy to use. I mean, look at what you've just seen. Mm -hmm. and she's covered pretty much everything from start to finish in less than 30 minutes. Yeah. And so I do have a question about the expenses and taking the pictures and attaching them. Mm -hmm. So you're on your iPad and you've just had a dinner with a client. You take a picture of the receipt. Um, does it? How do you tell it whether it goes to the credit card, bank account, or how does that work? So um, you would actually create uh, an expense um, to go with the picture. So you can add in the details of, uh, you know, I put it on this credit card. Right now we're not able to read the, the information off of the receipt, so you would have to enter that in. Um, but that's how you'd be able to, uh, you know, kind of add in. I was with these clients and I paid it, you know, on my Capital One MasterCard and that kind of thing. Or I did be careful. It looks like Katie is drawing mustaches on all of us. Right <laughs> now. Just just saying. <laughs> it was only and then when back in the accounting department, you know, you're gonna see that expense come in either with the credit card downloads. Yeah. And then you just reconcile it. That's I exactly it. You guys have reconciliation today. <laughs> Now, what other integrations do you guys have? Do you have integrations with other apps? You know, like, you know, there's a million apps that go with, you know, QuickBooks and Zero and whatnot. Do you guys have similar apps? So um, we have a few, not quite, uh, not quite as big an ecosystem as uh, as some of the other guys. We kind of make it so that you have what you need. Um, really, our main ones are um, for uh, for payroll, um, online payments coming soon, um, and we also have an integration with FreshBooks as well. If any of you guys have clients that are using that. Do you have a, a certification program like QuickBooks or Xero and then you have like find an advisor kind of thing? So um, we are hoping to have that very soon. So hopefully the next time I talk to you, um, I will have uh, a yes for you in that column. But it's something that I'm working on. Um, we've gotten a lot of feedback from our accountants and bookkeepers that it's something that they're looking for. And as for the, um, you know, uh, like the accountant finder, um, we kind of have like a kind of one that we use internally to be able to, it's something that our clients ask us for all the time. So um, to be able to have something public facing would be would be great, but we definitely do um, refer our clients to accountants all the time. So we are always looking to, uh, to build that list and have, you know, people that can help new small business owners especially get themselves organized. 
So I have a question about the bank feeds. Um, yeah. When when you start using the bank feeds, does it um, is it smart? Is it intelligent? Does it automatically categorize? You know, if there's a automatic payment that comes through through EFT and it has the description in it, will it automatically remember how you chose it to be from the previous time, or is it going to be a constant? Um, change so it'll get uh, to know some of the things especially with vendors and that kind of um, that kind of thing I'm not sure about the particular example that you mentioned but um, let me look into that but it does get to know some of your transactions so that um, so that I could start making matches a little bit easier for you the other thing that I noticed when I was kind of messing around with it because I've I've gone to cashew and then come off it and then come back and revisit it. And so this is like, I don't know, third or fourth time I've been messing with it. But um, when you're keying something in, like a new vendor or a new account, I notice that it doesn't, when you like tab after you key it in, it doesn't generate a new window. You have to physically take the mouse, click add ah. new vendor and add new account. And that's just, it's kind of, it slows down my process. So yeah. I'm going to try and do as little data entry as possible. Yes. I don't know if it's a feature enhancement, but... I've written that down, so uh, thank you for think. Yeah, thanks for letting me know. We'll uh, I'll pass that on for you. Anybody else have any questions? Is that okay? Can I make a no. comment, Seth? No. No. <laughs> not until I see what you drew. <laughs> <laughs> it actually told me that draw was not supported on my platform, so I didn't get uh. to draw a mustache on your face. <laughs> um. My comment's kind of about the last comment about some of the limitations of using an online system that we as accountants just need to deal with. When you're dealing with an online system, you're limited to the capabilities of the internet and browsers. I hear this from people all the time, like, why can't I scroll through my whole bank register in QuickBooks Online? Well, you're on a web page, so there's some things that are just you're going to be limited on, and even if you don't have the convenience of pressing tab or enter on every screen and you have to click a mouse, the amount of time that you're saving with all of the other automation makes up for that two seconds that you have to take to click a button. So I think that part of that is just a paradigm shift for us as accountants to say, yes, this is super convenient, let's appreciate what's convenient and not get hung up on the little things about it. Um, second comment, uh, Dennis, I see you're in Washington too, so for yeah. me, my, my biggest question is how many levels of taxability do you have for sales tax? Like is it yes or no on the item level? Do you sign a tax rate by customer? Is the tax rate assigned by invoice? Do you integrate with Avalara? Do you integrate with multi-channel sales platforms that can handle that sales tax? Because every state in the country here is different for sales tax. Yes. So yeah. opening it up in the US, like every accounting system is basically the same. We all know accounting, we can figure out where the button is. So what we're concerned about mostly as accountants is what, you know, do you support the features that my clients need? Are you only good for service clients that don't need tax? Will you support complex sales tax? You know, what can we do with your program and where can we apply it? So uh, very good that's question, and no, that's a, that was great. Um, for taxes, you are able to really customize it. You can set it so that there are default taxes per customer, but then you can also edit that as you need to. Um, so uh, we don't integrate with Avalara yet, but I am a big fan of theirs, so it's something that I'm definitely advocating for, and uh, the more I learn about um, taxes in the U.S., the more I can see the value in something like that. Uh, so we do have lots of options, and um, I mean, we do have lots of customers through, throughout the state. Um, probably more service-based, but I would say there are quite a few options if you have customers that are doing uh, more product sales. But you, do you just cash it? Won't track inventory quantity as well. It. I mean, I no. Can, okay. How about job costing? You were talking about. Um, I kind of got the impression it has something similar to classes. Yeah. So um, I would say probably um, project tracking would be the closest to uh, to what you're looking for. Um, yes, that's what I would say. Well, <laughs> I, I've grown up in QuickBooks, and I'm used to like items and two-sided items. I'm assuming. Your items map to the GL and all that, but yeah, that's right. Do you have two-sided items where you can assign for you know if it's an expense on you know kind of like job costing, I guess. Yeah, so you can um, when you enter in an item, you can all, you can the system will ask you, do you sell this? Do you buy this? So you're able to kind of track it as you need to. Now, one thing I remember um, last time I was playing around in Cashew, sort of deeply, when I use an item. You, you access it from the account drop-down. There's not a separate item drop-down on the sales form, correct? Is that still the case? 
<laughs> yeah, when you're creating an invoice, do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, you so can you're just... gonna, when you create your items, you map it to the GL account, but then when you're creating the invoice, just so everyone knows, I, I remember struggling with this for a minute before I figured it out, but you, you have to actually hit the account drop-down, and then you'll see your accounts, and then you'll also see your items in that yeah. same drop-down. It's sort of consolidated. So this way, they're mutually exclusive. You are either going to use an item or an account. Obviously, you can't do both. Yeah. But the nice thing is it gives you that flexibility that instead of using an item, I can just use the, the account that I want rather than having an item used that's mapped to an account. So I can do it either way. Do you have the same kind of problems that QuickBooks has, especially with the desktop, on when you make a general entry, you're bypassing items, and so your sub-reports don't match your, gen your general ledger reports? So I don't know that example in particular, but let me find out some more um, information for you. All right, anyone else? Dennis, well, I'm, I'm interested in understanding that question. I don't understand your question either. Okay, on the desktop, you know, mm -hmm. when you, it's when you don't use, you make a journal entry when you should have been using an item, and so your global GL reports are out of whack to your um, detail reports, and what's sweet is the way you get around it is a, um, um, a zero-sum check. Okay, so are you talking about like making a journal entry to adjust inventory or something? Yeah, in Cashew. I just asked if they have the same kind of issues that QuickBooks has. Oh, like the inventory count not being... I think I understand what you well, mean, like but do you have inventory like, in Cashew? Like, like no, we don't have inventory. Like the accounts receivable. Or you would use I, I get what you're saying now. Like if you make an adjustment against AR, it's not actually affecting any open AR items, correct? Yeah, something like that. Okay, I get it. Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> I want to say one thing I, I liked about the program was that compared to zero, you don't have this funky terminology on, you know, some of the things that are kind of hard, it's hard to, you know, understand. And I like the idea that I mean, like zero, for example, you can't get financial statements on the mobile device. You can with QBO, but not zero. So I, I like the idea I can actually get an income statement and a balance sheet yeah. off, of the, off of the cell phone. I think the big draw with Cashew over the, you know, let's just for lack of a better word, call them competing products, is, is its simplicity. I think that's the draw with Cashew. Um, obviously, if you have complicated inventory tracking needs, you're not going to use Cashew. You're going to go yeah. to another product. But like Casey said from the get-go, if you have a simple service-based business, it's perfect. If you have a very mm -hmm. simple inventory model where you don't care about tracking the quantities in the accounting software, because let's say you, you sell everything you buy and you sell it through very quickly, right? Let's say you're an eBay vendor and you just buy stuff and you sell it on eBay. You may not care about tracking the quantity that carefully in a case like that. If you have a simple inventory model, then again, Cashew can work perfectly for something like that. Mm -hmm. So all these things have to be taken into consideration about you know, who you're using it for and what the needs are. You know, like, I, 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 Tina posted a comment in here about, you know, the products reducing the amount of time it takes for certain features with mouse clicks and things, and that's another area where those needs have to be balanced with, you know, what the product offers. And some products are going to handle certain things better than others. So that's why I will never, I'll be the first one, I should say, to go out there and say that I don't think there will ever be a one-size-fits-all mm -hmm. product out there. It's never going to happen. Right? There's going to be different products that are going to address different needs. There's going to be a ton of overlap between them. And so then it's a matter of trying to find the best fit for the client, especially for us as accounting professionals. And I think Cashew offers a great solution along those lines for, like Casey described at the beginning. That's why I purposely started off the hour with that question of who's the perfect customer for Cashew. I want people to hear that because mm -hmm. I want you to know when you're looking and talking at your, to your clients, don't talk at your clients. Talk to them. <laughs> or better yet, talk with them. But when you're when you're listening, hopefully, to your clients and understanding what their needs are, I want you to start. I'm hoping you'll start thinking in terms of, okay, is this a good fit for Cashew? Simple service-based business model. Uh, Casey, do you want to tell us again because uh, Mariette's asking, and yeah. some people may not remember, who is the perfect client for Cashew? 
So really it's that service-based small business customer, um, exactly what you just said, kind of the zero to ten employee range, um, not really inventory based, uh, but um, that small business owner who just needs a really simple, easy to use solution. Uh, the mobile features are great, especially for that kind of customer, because they're able to just you know do their invoice, do their expense right on their phone, and then you can log in on the web and do what you need to do. Yep, where, where people I think, especially as accountants, where we end up getting frustrated is when we try and force a client into a product with a product model that doesn't really address their needs properly. So, and you can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, so you re that's where listening is the most important skill we have as accounting professionals. We really have to listen to our clients. We really have to be able to visualize their entire business cycle before we put them into a product or make a decision about which product to switch to or from and really determine is this the right fit for my client. And that's why I think it's critically important to understand for every different product that you choose to service. Because like Dennis, I can't learn them all, right? Sometimes I think I can, but that's just <laughs> me because that's all I do all day. But I can't learn them all, but I have to choose. And I want to be able to be agile enough to be able to offer options. And then I need to be able to understand what the difference is from one to the next so I can listen to the client, understand what their business cycle looks like. Remember, the client doesn't know. The client understands how their business works from an operational standpoint very well. They don't know how that translates into the accounting software that they need. That's where we have to serve as translators and listen to what their operational model looks like put that picture together and translate it into the accounting and think, okay, what's the best fit for the client? Which product am I going to choose? And so again, when you run into somebody who says, I've got a very simple service-based business, some of the other products may be a whole lot more than what they need, so that you might turn around and say, you know what? I watched the demonstration of Cashew on the schoolofbookkeeping.com Friday morning hangout, and that looked like that might be a perfect fit for this client. That's how you want to think. I think. You know, it sounds like you are taking a better aim at the Intuit's going after. We talked about this before last week, Gina, about the small business thing that they're doing with with the uh, QuickBooks. It sort of looks like it's a dumbed down version of QBO, but it seems like yours is maybe better targeted to the contractor market where people are, you know, 1099s. Because yeah. that's the market into it's sort of going after, but I don't know in a very. Oh, you're talking I, about the uh, self-employed product. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I right think now, the, I would never recommend the self-employed product. Something like Cashew is like, oh, hands down, so much yeah, better. That's it. Like this is, I think, important for us to be aware of that this is an emerging segment of the market where, you know, about a year, a little more ago, I started hearing people say the expression more and more that the, the unemployed is the new entrepreneur, right? And so you have this growing, it's still a small, relatively speaking, a small segment of the marketplace, but it's a fast growing segment of what we call the solopreneur, right? People like actually, frankly, many of us, where we're a one person show, and we, we kind of do everything, and we have a real simple service-based model, and we're not looking to grow a big company and have hundreds of employees and f flip and be serial entrepreneurs. We just, it's simple. Yeah. And those solopreneurs are what products like Cashew are aimed perfectly at, and I think right. that's You want to keep them in compliance, and I think that's a struggle, too. Yeah, there's a... And, and being able to do things like bank reconciliation prove yeah. what you're doing is viable, where something like we were talking about before, you can just put anything in there. It's like picking numbers out of the air. There's no substantiation. There's nothing, you know. So you need a product like Cashew that's a little bit more full body. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask you again about the Android, because I'm using Android. How new is that? So that came out uh, just before Christmas. Pardon? Just just before, uh, just in December, uh, we released our Android app. So very early stages, I'll tell you uh, right up front. But uh, we are definitely working to build it, um, build it out, make it more uh, more fully featured. I saw a demo of what's coming next uh, at our last team meeting. So um, the guys are working pretty hard on, uh, on making that even better for you. So um, I did want to answer some of the questions. Um, in the chat that I didn't get a chance to. But somebody asked about um, kind of what, uh, who our competitors are or what other programs do customers look at before they come from Cashew. We kind of find it's like two camps. One is um, the small business owner, exactly who you guys mentioned, who tried to use something like QuickBooks, got super overwhelmed and just kind of uh, 
was looking for something a lot easier. Um, or on the second half, we have the client who did nothing and just kind of does nothing. And uh, they're looking for, you know what, they're making their, their invoices in Excel, which is not really a long-term solution. So those are kind of the two camps um, that our customers uh, come from. And what is your connection with FreshBooks? I would think you wouldn't need FreshBooks. Yeah, I mean, you can do all of your invoices and expenses right in Cashew. Um, but um, we've integrated with them for a long time, and uh, that's kind of where um, you can bring in, if you have clients that are using it, you can bring that information into Cashew. I think that's actually really smart because a lot of people like to use FreshBooks just for invoicing. Uh, and that way, the, and that's what they think. That's how they think of FreshBooks. Yeah. Even though in truth, FreshBooks can do the whole cycle. Um, I would well, let's just say that a lot of people are accustomed to using FreshBooks strictly for invoicing. So then they want to integrate it with something like Cashew to complete the accounting cycle. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, all right. So it is nine o'clock. It is the uh, bottom of the hour here. Hold on a second, because we have a, something very special for you. And while we're waiting, Ray asked the question in the chat actually about importing uh, PayPal transactions into Cashew. If we can import a CSV file, then I imagine that can work. I download from PayPal to CSV and from CSV into Cashew. Yep, exactly. Okay, so remember, think of a few of your favorite things today. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, that happy note, thinking of a few of our favorite things, we're, we're going to give Casey a very gracious thank you for taking time out to show us the Cashew product today. Uh, please come back and join us anytime. Yes, thank you. Panel. You know, we would love to have you here just giving us your feedback and your perspective on things. So, uh, you're welcome every single week if you want. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for having me, everyone. And uh, definitely get in touch if there's anything that I can help with um, or any other questions that you have. That is okay. what I'm here for. Make sure you post your contact information in the event feed there so people can get okay. it easily. Perfect. All right, everyone. We'll see you uh, on Gina's Hangout later this afternoon. Absolutely. Okay. Okay.